I'll be able to find Here. <laughs> There's some over on that side too. Yeah. Well, I'm staying away from that one. I'm you can close the blinds on that one too if you need to. I don't want to feel like I'm not that social. I'll be here. I'll be here. Uh, Let me tell you. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another Moxie training. Can everybody hear me? If you can, give me a thumbs up or a wave. Awesome. Super. Thank you for that assistance. I appreciate it. Um, today is part two of our Moxie website training, and it's going to build um, or continue to build on building your website. Uh, that's kind of redundant, but, you know, you know um, uh, I get tongue tied sometimes. <laughs> so um, we're gonna we're gonna jump right in. Uh, we know that you start everything through the hub. Um, again, everybody, make sure you know that if you need tech support, you can click on technical support, find the number, give me a call, or send an email to support at the American Realty dot tech, and that will come straight in and build a ticket for me, and I can answer your questions and or try to solve your problems. Um, problems dealing with Moxie, anyway. Other problems are on your own. Um, uh, we're going to start by clicking on my website on the top menu bar, and that will take you directly into your admin. Um, last time we went through the process of the initial process of clicking on that. Uh, so today we're going to jump straight into our admin tool. Now, the areas of the admin page that are important are the menu across the top. This is your administration menu. It shows your login over to the right and how you can sign out. Uh, it also shows visit site over to the left. If you click on visit site, you can you can see what your site looks like at this moment. It will open in a new window and it will show you what that site looks like. Now, currently, this is the sample site we've been working in. Uh, so you just see a uh, agent based website where the agent information is predominant. Uh, we changed some colors last week. That's why the text is not uh, the, the correct colors. But this is just showing you the process of going through. Quickly, I'm going to touch on personalizing your site style. Um, again, you've got search focus or agent focus, or you've got custom page preview. And you've really got the ability with that custom page to go far beyond what we do in these three trainings that we're doing. So agent focus is what we just looked at. Search focus, again, you can preview these very quickly, and you see how it changes the information from there. The next thing in your list of common tasks was personalizing your home page. Uh, we went through that process. We uh, choose our upload, uh, or choose our, uh, chose our image uh, to go on our front page. You can change that easily. You can also override the profile information it pulls from uh, the Moxie profile. Uh, by changing your picture, if you wish, your name, other things along the thing down through here. Just know that if you change it here, it does not change it in your profile, and it no longer pulls information from your profile for this. If you wish to change, you do reset the default, and it will change to pulling directly from your profile. So just know that if you want to change stuff overall, then change it in your profile. It'll pull it over into here easily. Uh, You've got welcome text that you can customize down as we go down, as well as the different modules that you can set up on your homepage. Featured properties, custom searches, blog modules, links, as well as custom uh, information. So you've got the ability to really customize that homepage. Over here on the left, you'll notice this is my navigation bar. You notice I keep clicking on home to bring me back to this admin tool. 
uh, main page. Customizing your default search area, we did that last week where you simply go to your sample website, uh, you go to a property search and do the search that you want to. Copy the link for that search from your URL and then paste it back in the area and you basically have created a default search. You can create multiple default searches, which you can put on your website. So create custom search links. It's basically the same thing as creating a custom search. You have to create the custom search first and then you link it here by selecting it from the drop down. When you save that, it puts it along your menu bar at the top to make it easier for uh, people to see what you are trying to angle or get them to see. So if I change this to custom, custom search here for the navigation bar, I just, if I can spell, name it search around Madison and save. Remember, every time you make a change, you have to refresh your live view. And now when that comes up, you'll notice that it's added search, the, create, the one I created to the menu bar. When I click on it, it does the custom search that we created around Madison um, in our previous class. So again, home takes us back and we are now clicking on the create custom menu links. So this is where we're going to pick up today. Creating custom menu links is simple. You click the go there link, and then you enter a name for this link and the URL that you want it to link to. So if you want to backlink your agent website to the American Realty website, you can put it in here. Uh, just type American Realty and then put the URL for the American Realty webpage. And I recommend that you open the link in a new browser window. The reason I recommend this is because you don't want people to be forced to leave your website. You want to keep them there as long as possible and gain as much information uh, as they can because that's the easiest way for them to become a lead for you in the long run and fill out a contact me information page. So you put the menu link name. I'm just going to type test. Enter the link URL. I'm going to just type the Got to do the HTTP colon for two forward slashes. W dot the American. Is it American Realty Online? The American Realty dot com. Open in a new window and then click save. What that does when I refresh my live view, you'll notice now that I've got an option here that says test, which is what I named that. And if I click that, it will open the American Realty website in a new page. What that does is it leaves my page still open so that they can access the information there as they need to. Okay, so that's an important thing to do. Menu links are helpful in the fact that they help build your ranking with Google and other search engines. Links to other websites are seen as a good thing. They show that you have established some sort of um, interaction, I guess you could say, with other websites in your community or, or along the same topic lines, and those are scored favorably when they're scoring your website. So just know that when you put links in, link them to other websites, and if you get at all if possible, could get reverse links from their websites back to yours, that all helps with what you call SEO search engine optimization, and it is a good way to bump your page up in the search options in Google. Organizing your site's navigation menu, page, or menu order. Click go there. This shows all of the pages in your website. You'll notice that they have a page type, homepage, menu item, then under there are different things. You've got the custom search we did. We've got the properties page. Then you've got another menu item. Then you've got buying and selling tips and financial calculators. That's the name of the page. Then under the about me, which is a menu item, you've got your profile page, your contact, your testimonial page, and it continues down the list. And you'll notice how they're indented 
so that you know if you click on about me these three that are indented are going to be sub menus or menus underneath the about me um, topic so if i switch back here and i come to about me you'll notice there's a drop down it's got the my bio and the contact me in there so here my bio and contact me testimonials you'll notice didn't show and it says hidden if a page doesn't show, it could be because it is hidden. One thing you need to make sure you do is come back here for any page that you want to show that doesn't and make sure that you click view and that will make that an unhidden page. It'll go through the process of opening up that page. And now when you go to about me and you refresh, you'll see that huh. for some reason we're not having, since it didn't pull that up, it didn't unhide it. So let me see, click edit. There we go. In order for it to be visible, it has to have some sort of a content. So just know that. That's why it's not showing for me. If I come in here and create a testimonial, you have to confirm the content or images are yours and you got permission. Then you come here, it shows visible, Don Smith, and hidden. There are none. So if you have multiples, you are able to hide those. Once you click publish, then you can refresh your page. And under the about me, gotta get back there. Under the about me, you have to make the view. It now shows that John Smith, then you should be able to have it pull up under about me. Okay, I need to make a note of that. For some reason, testimonials are not showing on the menu when I unhide it. It's not letting me unhide it. Oh, here we go. Okay, it would help if I clicked on the right button. <laughs> Show. There you Show go. versus hide. Sorry. <laughs> hey, it's only 10 o'clock. It should be unhide. It should be unhide, exactly. But once I click show, now it'll do what I've asked it to do numerous times. There's testimonials. So you see that there are ways to hide pages and to unhide pages or show pages to put them on your screen. If on a submenu, like say properties here, you wanted your uh, office's listings at the top. In order to drag those, you'll notice that when I hover over the title, it gives me that four directional drag. I simply click and drag up in my list. And then when I view my page, it changes the order in which those appear in your submenu. So under properties, I would have property search. My office's listings are hidden. So if I click show, then what will happen is it pulls my office's listings up in there and I can move that around as well. I can't get to the chats. There are some questions. Just people sign. Oh. Um, but just know that you can reorder those pages in whatever order you need to. You can hide pages, you can show pages. And what I would recommend is if you're working on a new page, keep it hidden until that page has reached the state that you want to release it to the public. Um, but don't get the paralysis analysis, so the analysis of paralysis, or paralysis of analysis, whatever it's called, uh, because then you'll sit there and go, well, it's not perfect. Nothing on the internet is perfect, so get it as good as you can get it, put it up, and tweak it as you need to. That way you get the information in your client's hands.
Okay, so just know also there's the site pages link over here, which is a different way to get to it than where we did through our common tasks. Okay, the next common task we have are our property lists, manage our property lists. Click the go there link. Here are the property lists that we current, currently have, active listings, sold listings, featured properties, offices listings, my company's active listings, and my company's sold listings. I just want to say hello to everybody. Hello, everybody. Hey, I'm glad you guys are joining us. It's exciting. I've been watching some of these things that's happening, and it's uh, it's very powerful. So I'm excited you guys are getting online. So I'll, I won't interrupt for just a second. Just want to say hey. <laughs> Thanks, Adam. Tom? On these property lists, you'll notice that each one of them has an edit button and a delete button. If you have a property list that you don't want to show, uh, you can always delete that property list and rebuild a new one for it, or you can click edit to change what it shows. So if I click my active listings, it'll come over and say, okay, my active listings. That's how I've selected from the stuff that is right here. Um, I can also add a property to my active listings that may not be my property, but that I've got permission to uh, market on my website. Maybe it'd be through another brokerage, but I've got permission from that um, from that agent to list that or, or promote that. I can put that in as MLS number there, and it asks me to certify that I have permission from the listing or selling agent. So it's reminding you of all the things you should remember to get done before you list a property that is not one of our properties at American Realty, okay? So just know that your active listings, you can put other listings in there as long as you have permission to do so. Can you touch on current active listings and how you bring how you bring anything that is that they've previously done into the system? Okay. Um, when everything is linked through your MLS, so when you click my active listings, anything that you've got that is considered active will pull over. Um, it doesn't look at other listings the same way that um, Engage doesn't look at other things that are there. So if you're pulling actives, it's not going to pull pendings. Uh, if you're pulling solds, it's not going to pull pendings. Um, actives gives you the option to where you can include those by unchecking this, or you can click that to uncheck it. You'll notice all the different options down here. They give you the ability to exclude pending in some of these if you don't want them to show. But it is linked live to the MLS status of that particular listing. So if it's in MLS and it's not considered an active listing, then it won't pull over. If you've added some and they're not showing up and you've just added them recently, you can always refresh your feed clicking this button here. And that will reestablish the link or renew the link with MLS and hopefully pull over anything that is considered new in that area. Um, also down here, this MLS number property tile, as you put in custom property listings, you have the ability to make those visible or hidden, and you do much like you do your pages. So you can select those, whether they're visible or hidden, and uh, they will display or go away as needed. Remember, if you're putting a listing on your website, and it's one of these custom property listings, Periodically check your website every 30 days to make sure that none of your old listings are still showing on there uh, after they've closed, because I believe that is a correct requirement. It has to be updated at least every 30 days. So make sure you check those every 30 days to go from there. Now, we're, since we're looking at property lists, if I come back to property lists over to my left navigation bar, it'll take me back to my main area. I can come back to my sold listings. Okay, the question that we have on the chat is, will you be able to bring over our solds from back agent to the website? If they're in MLS for the current year as sold, yes. If it's beyond the current year, no, if I understand correctly. So only the things from the 2022 year will pull over. Um, so if it was sold before 2022, it won't pull over. The reason is that Moxie tracks your sales based on the calendar year. 
And that's why it only looks at the calendar year information when it's pulling things over. I hope that answers your question. Um, so it's, it's not going to necessarily be a place where you can um, accumulate sold listings from years in the industry. Uh, you're just going to have to, uh, you're just going to show the ones that are the most current. Again, if you've got a listing that's not showing as sold, then it is a 2022 listing. I would recommend going back and checking the MLS status. Um, a lot of times the MLS status is delayed in getting updated. So once that MLS status shows as sold, if you refresh the feed, it should come through. Um, again, the refresh feed is something that needs to be done periodically. And looking at your listings needs to be done periodically as well. Click on property list to go back to property list. Again, all the various listings you can see, they select from the various menu options on that same screen. Important thing to remember is this screen looks the same for all of them. Okay, it gives you the ability to exclude pendings if that option is available. It gives you the option to add property listings as long as you certify you have permission to do so. And you'll see here that since these are uh, office listings, we have these that pull over from the MLS for our office. Now, what you've got the ability to do, and this is what we talked about with our pages as well, is say you're marketing to the target audience of the $200,000 to $300,000 price range, because that's our average sale price. If you want to target that particular price range, then you can come in here and hide those more expensive properties that you don't want visible to people who visit your website. Um, so if you know that you're not going to be trying to sell a McDonough home that's $2.8 million, then hide it. That way people don't go to your website and get discouraged because everything you're showing right at the top is out of their price range. Okay. Another thing you can do is if you want to highlight a particular property, you'll notice if you hover over the, na the name of the listing, you get that four directional arrow again. So I can click and I can drag that up into the listings. And that puts that listing at the top of my list. So if you've got listings that you do want to highlight, maybe that aren't yours, that are a fellow member of the office, pop those up towards the top as well. And then that'll get good traffic to those and maybe help from discouraging some of the others. So you'll notice I moved this Jonesboro 650 up to the top. I'm going to hide this McDonough area single family home. You'll notice what happens when I click on hide. It comes all the way to the bottom down under hidden properties. Okay. And then I've got the ability to show that again if I want to. But that $2.8 million home I just hid. It apparently is in there twice for some reason. But if I go to my website now and I look at my office's listings, you have it in Georgia MLS and MLS. No, I've just got Georgia MLS. Are those only FMLS? That's weird. It should still give me the ability to hide it. But that's the reason it's going to appear twice. Oh, okay. But I hit both. Hmm. Oh, I know why. Once you go through the process of hiding things or moving them around, click publish. <laughs> It's like save, it's like apply, you know, it's like turning on the oven when you put something frozen in it. You're just giving them examples of why they might yeah. call you. Yeah, I'm giving you examples of failures. <laughs> <laughs> and they're mine right now. Okay, so once you publish it, then you refresh the page you're looking at. Once that page refreshes, you'll now see the one I moved to the top there and the $2.8 million ones are at the bottom. The reason there were two listings and Amanda pointed this out is because one of them was an FMLS listing, one of them was an MLS listing. So just make sure if you're trying to hide a property that has been listed in both, you have both instances of it. And that way it'll make sure it's hidden well. Okay. 
So any questions about property lists, that's where you really can um, harness the strength of the IDX and put things out there that are geared towards your customer base. Um, you know, some of us may not be luxury property people and we don't try to sell those. So we can hide those from our website and make it so that it is more of our target market friendly. Um, we may not want to sell a home that's in Conyers or McDonough or wherever. You can hide those and only focus on the ones that are within an area that you target. So just know that that is um, well within the ability to do. Now, add your client testimonials is next. You, re you realize that we've been here before and I made mistakes, but this time we've got it right. So our testimonials, we can pull testimonials from people, we can type them in here, uh, and we can add them to our um, testimonials page. Testimonials are a good way for us to build um, build the fact with our clientele that we have knowledge of the area, that we've actually been working, we've actually been selling homes in this area. And it's a good way to see what your customers think of you. Um, so I would recommend putting testimonials in here because that can be what triggers someone to say, hey, I wanna work with that person. Um, I'll sell personalized testimonials for $20 a pop. <laughs> Sean says that he'll give you a personalized testimonial, you give him $20, we're all good to go. I don't know how that would go over with Grant being a forced <laughs> testimony, but you know. I will say there is testimonial tree if you do need help with testimonials. Okay. That is a plugin that, that can be offered in the site. They okay. can help you to set up your testimonials within the system so that they're displayed appropriately. Okay. Um, Amanda said that there is a plugin within the site called testimonial tree, and it can help you in the process of organizing your testimonials and getting them pulled into the system properly. So that may be a discussion for a uh, brief video training on how to use that process. It is not free. Uh, it's not free. It is not free. Yeah. So just know that you have the ability to add a paid option for your testimonials. It doesn't pay them, but you have to pay for it. And they are real. <laughs> what? And they're only yours. You only provide them. <laughs> they're not fake. Yeah, they're not fake. They're real. Um, unlike Sean's. So, all right. Oh, come on. So, <laughs> That'll be real. <laughs> As with other things that we've looked at, you've got the ability to hide various testimonials. So if I hide this John Smith testimonial, you'll notice it moves it down to hidden. If I click show, it'll move it to the top. Remember that anytime I change the status of a testimonial or add a new testimonial, I have to click publish which I've forgotten to do multiple times today, so you should know to do it. Um, real life examples. Yeah, real life examples. Another thing you need to notice is right here, when we skirted over this earlier, but you've got this kind of acknowledgement button before it will let you click add. It says, if the content or images above contain the name or other identifying details of any person living or deceased, I confirm that I have obtained written permission from that person to use their name or identity as required by the terms of service. This is a CYA for Moxie, and it is a suggested CYA for you because you don't want to have somebody come back and say, you didn't have permission to use my name, you didn't have permission to use my image uh, or the image of my home. So you just want to make sure that the testimonials you get are above board and that you've gotten the ability to utilize them and share them. Okay, to go back to our common task, click home again. Can I can I add on that? Yeah, Amanda's gonna add on this. Um, I don't know if they can hear me or not. Can you hear Amanda? Okay, yes. so also if you're adding stock images to the site, please remember to use companies like Canva, where the images are already paid for and where you're not breaking any copyright laws at that point. So just make sure that you're using images that are also approved on that end as well. Yeah. Being able to find royalty-free images is a good thing. Um, you can use Adobe Stock, which is paid. Yep. Um, you can use Canva, which has a pro version as well as a regular version. And they have very good images through Canva. So if you're using Canva, those can be used. Um, there are other stock image services out there. 
Um, a lot of them charge you for the image, um, but uh, if you don't want to do that, definitely Canva is a good way to do it for free uh, and get good quality images, high quality images uh, for your website. And their pro service is only twelve ninety five a month. Yeah. So, and that's for all of their services. That's for scheduling social posts. That's for creating any marketing pieces. All of that. And I think if you have never had the opportunity to look at Canva, this is kind of a, a rabbit trail. I would recommend you do that because as an agent, it gives you so much flexibility for creating collateral material to hand out, um, creating even presentations, uh, backgrounds, image combinations with lettering and other things. It really gives you the ability to do a lot of things that you can do, really enhance your social media posts and stuff like that. We're gonna offer a training class on Canva, and we may offer them on a quarterly basis going forward. So okay. because it is free to you, and if you want additional fees, it is $12.95, but it's super easy. I've been using it for three years now. Love it. Yeah. I can't live without it. I use yeah. it every day. It's a very good tool to have. Next thing you have here is to add your social media links to your site. I'm going to check the chat real quick. Hold on. I have Canva Pro. Well worth it, says Rebecca. You can use it so many ways. They also have Canva University. That is good. That is good. Thank you for bringing that up, Rebecca. If you look at Canva and you're like, oh, wow, I don't even know how to get started. Canva offers free video training to walk you through the process of creating so many different tools. So many templates. So right. many templates already done. Um, it's really a, a good resource as an agent to be able to pull from that information. So our next common task, we're going to jump in to add social media links to our website. We click go there. This is where you connect your social media. Now, the options they have for connecting are Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, YouTube, Pinterest, Instagram, and Blogger. Blogger is a blogging platform. And um, I believe it is owned by... I want to say it's owned by Google. I could be wrong, but you've got the ability to do a blog there. Post the HTTP and that little icon will appear on your website and you'll be able to click on that little icon to go to that. What I'm going to do at the moment is I'm just going to put in here. Uh, I, don't, I don't have one right off the top of my head, but if you know your Facebook, you can type it in there and link to it and you'll see it. Now, to modify any of these, you click Modify Social Media. It brings you here to your profile, and this is where you can enter those addresses there. Now, you'll notice when I was back on this, if I click, it highlights it, but it does, doesn't give me the ability to edit it, okay? So just know that it does pull this information from this modify social media link, which takes you to your profile social media links. So again, your profile needs to be updated with your social media links in order for them to appear here, which then appears on your website. This also provides you another area to modify your bio or profile settings, to choose an image, to enter information that may be different than what's in your profile, and you can click that save. Again, you've got the reset to default. So if you come in here and make changes and you decide, hey, I like these, I'm going to go to my profile and change them, then what you can do is come back here, click reset to default, and it'll pull in all the information you entered in your profile. And you don't have to worry about that information not being updated in the future. All right. Once you've made a change on the profile part here at the bottom, click save profile. That's like the button. Publish, which I haven't hit right a couple of times today. So just know to save your profile when you make a change. All right. The next thing we have is to set up our blog. All right. Again, the common tasks that we're doing are not things that are required to get your website up and running. If you'll remember from our first, to get our website up and running, all we had to do was go through the initial process of clicking on the menu for our website, basically telling it what we want our website name to be, and then our website's created in a very basic form that has some 
default information in it and some default links and searches in it. If that's all you want, that's all you have to do. The common tests are suggested so that it takes your website to another level besides just the stock website, which may or may not look like 50 other agents in the company who all they wanted to do was just turn a website on to have that process or IDX search available for customers. So it's really important to know that these common tests take you through a process which takes your website from bare bones basic to slightly customized, okay? And then we've got the ability to take it to an extremely customized process, which we can go into the site builder and stuff like that, which we're going to talk about next week. Okay, now to set up our blog, we click the go there link. And that takes us to our blog page. We can name our blog. This is my blog. Our blog category. We don't have any categories set up. We can set those up in our blog information. Once I click publish, I now have a blog page. So if I come to my site pages, you'll notice here we had our blog page, which was hidden, and I click show, and then I click show on the page I just created, and then click publish. When I come to my website and refresh, remember whenever we make changes, we need to refresh. And I come along this top menu, which is so hard to be able to see because we've hadn't changed those. I've now got a blog option and a link to this is my blog. If I click on that, it takes me to my blog. All right. And it lists the pages that I've written there. One thing that you notice, though, is it doesn't give you a place there to be able to add pages to your blog or add posts to your blog. In order to add posts to your blog, you come down to the left on the navigation bar and you click blog posts. And it will show you the blog posts you have. It'll show who wrote it, the category it's in, any tags that you might have signed to it, the date it was written, if there's a featured image with it. But if there isn't anything there, you click the add new to create a new blog post. All right, it pulls up just like an editor would pull up. This is a new post. And what we'll probably do in the future is do a dedicated blog posting uh, training, which will be very uh, helpful. So once I get the information in there for my blog post, I can link any uh, media that I want to have in it. I can also use the page builder, which will come in to play next week to really customize the way this looks like. I can also click on text to come in here and put code if I want to run certain things that I know how to write HTML code or JavaScript code, which is way above a lot of people's heads. Uh, you've got the ability to do that. So you can really customize how your blog post looks. But once you're done, you can save it as a draft, which means it won't go out over the web, or you can click publish. And if you click publish, I go back to my website and I do a refresh. Now you'll see that my new post is now on my blog page. All right, so just know you've got the ability to really customize your blog and really be able to uh, put information out there that you feel is helpful to your clientele. Also under blog posts is where you'll change or modify the categories for your blog posts, as well as any tags that you may have used or add for your blog post. All right, so it really gives you the ability to customize what you put out there and to categorize it so your clients can find it in as easy way as possible. And our last common task down here at the bottom is to apply an SSL certificate. An, SL, SL, an SSL certificate is what is called in TechSpeak a secure socket layer certificate. This tells the browser that they are pulling your website up on that this page is secure. 
The reason you need an SSL certificate is because if you go to a website that is not secure, you may notice that sometimes you will get an error. The last thing you want your client or customer to do is to go to your website and to get an error saying this site may not be secure. If they do that, that doesn't speak too highly for your business. It can be a detriment, especially to a clientele that does a lot of work online nowadays. So to apply an SSL certificate, you click go there. And then here it shows SSL is not enabled yet. That's right at the top. Here you can check flush rewrite rules on activation, deselect when you encounter errors, then it says go ahead, activate SSL, and then it says you may need to log in again. And then if you get the green check, an, an SSL certificate was detected on your site. Okay, so what we need to do is go ahead and activate our SSL. Now you'll notice that it says we've got a certificate and it is enabled. So when somebody goes to our website, you'll notice up here at the top it says not secure. When they go to our website after this point of applying the SSL certificate and it populating through the system, that not secure goes away. Another way you can tell if it's a secure website is because unsecure websites go to HTTP colon and secure websites go to HTTPS colon. You'll also notice the lock here that that non-secure has changed to a lock and that tells you that it, it, it has a secure certificate. It's just a way of confirming that your site is secure and trusted and a good place for people to come look for information. All right. Any questions about the common tasks we've talked about today? You're welcome to unmute and ask if you have any. Okay. All of the information you have here in your common task on this main admin tool are available from over here on your navigation side. Okay, you've got your site style you can customize, you've got your searches, your property lists, your links, your blog posts, your comments, um, your about me, everything. But then down here, you've got some site settings that really get into the technical side of making some things perform in specific ways. This is where you'll gain access to uh, some things that can break your website, okay? The last thing you wanna do is to break your website. Because if you break your website, say by coming into permalinks and changing the permalinks, um, we'll have to go through and have the uh, process undone by um, the Moxie group to do that, all right? So just remember settings here, there are some information here as well. Team, if you're on a team, this is where you'll establish your team members and your site administrators. The site builder is where you have templates, saved rows, saved columns, saved, mod saved modules, as well as categories, and the ability to add new templates to the builder. We have access to Yoast SEO. So if I click on SEO, Again, SEO stands for Search Engine Optimization, and your SEO score is what determines how high on a search you will appear. So it's important to do things that generate good SEO. When you are putting a blog in, make sure you put keywords in the metadata over to the side that are relative to what you're trying to, to promote. Um, like community events would be a good keyword. Uh, real estate might be a good keyword. Uh, Covington, Madison, if you want to target specific areas, you put those different things in your SEO keywords and you will wind up rising in the standings on Google searches. But under the Yoast SEO, it shows a dashboard where you've got problems or notifications if there are any. You've got features which you can turn on or off. SEO analysis, readability analysis, et cetera. Then you've got webmaster tools where you've got different verification codes that you can put in from Bandu, Bing, Google, and Yandex 
uh, we would probably be more affiliated with Bing or Google. And you'd have to get those codes from the Bing Webmaster Tools and the Google Search Console. So again, plugging information in there, saving that, tells Google, tells Bing, tells search engines that your site is trusted and possesses information that can be helpful to people looking in specific areas or keywords. Okay. The next thing down at the bottom of our navigation is PowerPress. This will be a completely separate training that we're going to wind up having to do because PowerPress is where you can set up a podcast. Um, you can import your podcast. You can migrate media into your podcast. You can fluctuate uh, or update your SEO for your podcast. It gives you an audio player, a video player that you can plug into your site. It gives you MP3 tags, which you can tag your um, podcast appropriately for their topic for the day. These are your keywords uh, so that when people search for a certain keyword, if your podcast covers something uh, along that line, it'll put that out in the search and provide a, a way for people to find it. And then it also gives you access to the PowerPress tools. So just know that using the template builder or the page builder, which is what we'll look at next week, uh, PowerPress, which is a completely separate training. SEO, we can probably combine with a couple of other things that we do next week. And then um, that'll basically take us to the more advanced level of how to have our website look differently, perform differently than the average website out there for our brokerage. That being said, are there any questions? I don't see any more in the chat. If there are some, please unmute, holler at me. We've kept this one a little bit short today, which is good because it's a lot of information. But if there are no questions, this was recorded and we will put the recording up as soon as we are able to get it downloaded and get it posted. If you missed last week's and you want to, or if you want to review last week's, I'll try to have both of them up by Monday and uh, send out links in our Moxie moment so that everybody can access those. Have, have you talked about, I, I know we have access to put media on our pages, sound if you want it. Mm -hmm. Have you mentioned that that's typically not a good idea for the person that's pulling up your website? Um, one thing that Sean said, um, and we'll get into this a little bit more in depth when we go into more customization with media, video, audio, that kind of thing. Anytime you put media or video on a website, just know that it can slow down the loading of your website. If you have a client that may be on an old computer or maybe on an old tablet, it can greatly decrease the speed at which your page loads. And a delayed speed in loading can cause them to click off your page before it loads. So what I recommend is on that first page, you make it as pretty as you can without a lot of media because that will give them the ability to go to your landing page and at least gain their footing and get a direction that they want to go before they get to the point. Now, if they click on an area that you want to have media, put the media in there, but there are ways to optimize media that I can't really go into at this point, but there's no reason to post a 4K video on your website when a 720p video on your website loads much faster, takes up a lot less resources, and has just the same um, visibility or clarity when you're looking at it on most tablets, computers, or phones. Okay, so just know that there are things you can do to really tweak um, the way your pages load if you are including media on your pages. Any questions about that? Hey, Adam, can you hear me? Yes, I Adam. Can. Hey, thank you. You did a great job. Listen, one of the reasons why I don't recommend music on your front page, because a lot of time people are actually at work looking at your website. If they land on it and music is playing instantly, it becomes uncomfortable to them to try to figure out how to lower it. That's exactly right. Thanks, Cedric. I appreciate that. And one thing that you can do is if you do, if you insist on putting media on your front page, make it so that it doesn't auto start. Because if it auto starts, it starts playing that music or sound in the background, 
Um, they're in the office trying to quickly get it shut down. They're annoyed with your website and they may not go back to it. So just make sure that they have to click on it to physically start the video and audio. That's, that's one thing if you absolutely insist on media on your first page or your landing page. Okay. If there are no questions, I thank you all for attending in Zoom land and in person. And we will um, pick up where we left off and we will continue next week. Hope everybody has a good week.